Hello, joining me today is Sam Clark from Experience Travel Group, a small, medium-sized enterprise based in London with 20 workers in London and hundreds of subcontractors based in South and Southeast Asia. Sam, thank you so much for joining me. And you are one of many people who are very much affected by the COVID-19 crisis. So just at the beginning, let's think about early this year, you already had travelers in Southeast South Asia. How did the whole COVID-19 crisis affect you earlier this spring? Well, we were, I guess we were quite early um, to, the, to the crisis in a way because we saw uh, a big drop in demand for holidays. We, we, we focused on holidays in Asia and South, South Asia and Southeast Asia. And we saw a big drop off in demand um, from really late January, early February, because people were thinking, you know, were worried about maybe contracting it in Asia. And obviously it started in China, which is close to some of our countries in Southeast Asia. So we saw a big drop off. Um, but it only really, it really started dramatically um, impacting on us in early March when suddenly our clients started being uh, started not being welcome really in in countries because it was it turned on its head and now it was seen as people from Europe bringing the virus to Asia. Um, so suddenly we were concerned about operating our tours. We had people putting restrictions on visas for our clients. We had lots and lots and lots of trips booked, and we were worried about them going. And yeah, that that was when we really felt the um, the impact. And how did you manage to? remove some of these clients who were stuck in countries i know you mentioned in one of your emails uh, about people stuck in vietnam you had to be quite creative in dealing with health authorities and rebooking flights how did you cope with that as a team well it yeah it was a crazy situation we had people in quarantine in vietnam because uh, they were on a flight where there were some confirmed cases um, we had people, some people who wanted to stay in and continue their holiday. Um, we had some people who desperately wanted to get out. We had airlines cancelling flights. We had people stuck on boats. We had all kinds of, all kinds of things happening, really. And, and I guess it was just our, our team were amazing. They, they worked sort of 24-7 for two weeks, really, calling up airlines, calling favours locally. Um, making sure that we knew where all our clients are. We had a spreadsheet with all of our clients listed on them so that we knew where they were at all times. We knew that we, obviously our focus is making sure that they were safe. Um, and then secondary, how are we going to get them out of country uh, and get them back to the UK? Um, so yeah, with a lot of, a lot of persistence and, and hard work and um, yeah, the, the, the guys know a lot about airlines. They know a lot of tricks and they know a lot of people. Um, and they just had to pull in every every last trick and uh, favour and uh, contact that they had um, to get people home. And thinking about the whole network that you are at the centre of, really, you've got your own team on the ground in London, and then you've got many, many people in all of these different countries that you bring clients to across South and Southeast Asia. Can you tell me a little bit about the impact for the people who work with you in Southeast Asia and South Asia, because already there's so many kind of weather disasters or, or even kind of, I, I remember I went to Sri Lanka with your company and people were thanking me for being there because it wasn't so long after the Easter attacks uh, last year. So how are they coping with this? Well, Sri Lanka's really had a double whammy because they lost so much business after the Easter attacks. Um, you know, they've, they've had a way down this season on the winter season on where they were going to be. And to suddenly have all their business taken away again is going to be devastating. They don't have uh, a safety net um, like, like we do, like we're lucky enough to have in the West here. Um, you know, so they really do fall back on, um, on, on their families and, and looking after themselves. So our guides are freelance. You know, we do what we can to make sure that we keep some of our guides on the payroll, keep them supported as much as we can. But there, there is only so much you can do with no business at all. Um, so it's, it's very, very difficult. Um, we try and we keep communicating with them. We keep talking to them. Um, we keep um, letting them know what's happening over here. And I think one of the great things that our clients were able to do was postpone their trips. So we had a lot of trips scheduled for Easter. 
um, lots and lots of family trips. We had a lot of trips of people going out for the cricket, England cricket tour of Sri Lanka. Um, and what the vast majority of those clients have been able to do is postpone the trips to later. So although they're not getting the income right now, um, they are able to know that there's income coming in next year, later on this year. Um, and I think that means a huge amount to them because it, it means they can borrow small amounts of money. It means they can plan financially. Um, and it means that they're, they're not forgotten. So that, that's made a huge difference, I think, to a lot of our, of our suppliers and partners and colleagues out there. But just thinking about postponing the trips, not even that is easy because um, postponing to when, <laughs> you know, even I've been obviously following the news in the UK, we don't quite know when the quarantine will lift in the UK. Here in mainland Europe, it's beginning to lift slowly in some countries. Um, so even the flight situation, nobody quite knows when things will be lifted. And as you previously said, when it comes to visas and being allowed into Asian countries, it, it was almost flipped on its head where they didn't want Europeans coming because they thought we would bring the COVID-19, the, the, the coronavirus with us. So there's so many factors to consider as to when one would postpone to, along with the fact that Southeast Asia is very much dependent on weather patterns and people often book their holidays dependent on the seasonal weather there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, we booked a lot of trips. We postponed a year. So that kind of got over the weather thing. And we, we, I guess we put it far enough ahead that we were hoping that it would be OK. And clearly, if it's, if it's not, we'll be able to postpone again. Um, or, or, you know, we would have to look at refunds at that, at that situation. But yeah, it's very, very uncertain situation still. Um, so we're not postponing trips for the summer because, you know, we just don't think there's a high enough likelihood of people being able to travel at the summer. Sadly, um, we're really planning for 2021 now. Now, thinking about your team in the UK, you say you have 20 staff there. How are you managing to cope? Do you think what the government have done in the UK, a lot of furloughing, um, are you getting enough help from the government? Well, in a way, travel companies fall through the cracks a little bit because we're, we still have a lot of clients to service. We have a lot of people to look after. Um, so we can't furlough our entire team even though we've got no business coming in, we've still got those bookings and clients are our priority. So we have to look after them. So though we have, we have furloughed some of our team, we can't furlough all of our team. Um, but we're really lucky. We've got an incredible team. They're really, really passionate. They really care about what they're doing. Um, they all took pay cuts even before it kicked off um, to allow us to sort of navigate our way through. Um, and yeah, they've just been working so, so hard just to, um, to, you know, to make sure that our clients were all right, make sure all the trips were postponed. And now they're thinking really creat creatively about you know, how we can engage our, how can we can engage our clients. They're, all, they're volunteering, the guys that are furloughed, um, to help the NHS and, and various community things. So they're doing some amazing things for them. I'm really, really proud of them. Uh, th that's wonderful. I know so many people are pulling together in different ways to help um, the NHS, for instance, on the ground in the UK. It goes without saying really that um, one of the kind of intrinsic values of your company is the very close client relationship you build. Do you feel that has helped as, as, as really one of the pillars of, of your company and, and your ideals? Yeah, I think that's really what's kind of got us through, to be honest, because because we build up a very personal relationship and we're a small company um, and we're all about really getting to know people so that we can match them to the holiday that will work for them um, and create the conditions really that will make, that will make, that make the holiday right. And that takes a lot of getting to know people. And I think because of that, when it came to postponing or when it came to us saying to our clients, look, can you, are you able to postpone? It would really help us out. Um, you know, and some of them maybe had reasons that, that they couldn't. Um, and that's, you know, that's fair enough. But, but so many of them were, were, were able to say yes for you and for the people in Sri Lanka or Vietnam or Thailand or wherever it was. Yeah, we we're, were able to postpone. Um, we still get to look forward to a holiday. Um, and, and they really, really, really tried to help us out, which, which meant so much to us. It really did. And of course, everybody across the world knows that none of this is your fault and everybody is in the same boat. So I suppose that helps, too. But of course, without question there's probably going to be in a huge global recession and perhaps a monumental shift in in how the travel industry operates there's many layers of, of travel of course and you are a very 
boutique hotel like type of travel you're working to give the holiday of a lifetime a real experience as it says in the title of your company to clients do you feel because you're hitting a very specific type of target audience so to speak when it comes to travelers you will be hit you will have to change as much as people who are sort of mass marketing how are you viewing the changes underfoot right now in the travel industry well we see it sort of in a in a kind of strange way as potentially an opportunity because we're, we do travel that's really kind of meaningful that people put a lot of effort into a lot of thought into it's it's not cheap either it, 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 you know it's it's a lot of investment for people um, and we really try and make that meaningful and if if travel becomes sort of scarcer a lot of people now are stuck at home they're not able to travel and they value it higher if it's something that we need to do a bit less of um you know the the feeds into the whole climate change thing you know if it's something that we really need to make the most of when we do it um because i do think it's important i think it's it's something that people do because it really feeds you know it really feeds their soul it really feeds into what what they care about and it really feeds into our understanding of the world um, but if we have to do it less but have to make more of when we do do it i think that that is something that our company really um, thrive on and, and can, can kind of um, not 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 take advantage of, but I think it could leave us in a in a good in a good position. It's really nice to hear you say that you're looking at this as an opportunity. As as a co-founder and as a leader, have you ever had um, dark moments when you've thought, I don't know how to to keep going here, keep the company going, keep my team together? Has that ever crossed your mind? How do you keep yeah. going? I guess in in the in the in the real apex of the in the in the in the in the whole in the apex of the storm, um, three weeks or four weeks ago, you know, every day thinking how can we how can we continue? You know, I remember when I looked on I think it was the twentieth of March, and we noticed that the foreign office foreign and Commonwealth office had advised against all travel anywhere, and you're a travel company. How how can you come back from that? It's that's that's the end you know we never would have thought that possible when i saw that it didn't even blink because we've been hit by so many things um but you just you just kept going by um by the team who are so you know positive um who believe in what they're doing um by the clients by our customers who send us up supportive messages um who come back and tell us how much the holidays mean to us um and by the fact that you know we're in travel we've got for a lot of things before nothing quite like this uh, admittedly but when we start soon after we started we had the asian tsunami um you know there was there was 9 11 there was a financial crisis there was um there's been you know volcanic volcanic eruptions there was the easter bombings in sri lanka last year there's so many things um that cause trouble in in, in travel and, and you have to you have to to some degree roll with it some degree you know remember that your primary duty is to your clients um, and, and just work out how you can keep going day to day, um, but also keep your eye on the, on the future. So that's, that's kind of a very long winded way of answer to your question. And have you any final comments to, to people watching this? Well, all I'd say is that everything does come to an end. Um, so however, however bleak things look, you know, right now when, when you're stuck inside and, and I know, you know, it's very, very difficult for so many people, but um, much, much more uh, in a much more difficult situation than myself. But, you know, everything does come to an end. So we just have to focus on getting it through. We have to focus on on what's good, you know, keep focusing on the uh, the spring and um, and what we can do and uh, and, and just get through um, until until there's another day. Thank you so much, Sam, for your time. And hopefully people will be able to travel with your company in the very near future, even if that's just a year away. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Lisa.